So today we're going to talk about infectious bovine serotoconjunctivitis um, in cattle, which is more commonly known as pink eye. Okay, so what is pink eye? So pink eye is a common contagious bacterial disease caused by Moraxilla bovis, and it causes inflammation of the cornea and the conjunctiva, which is the pink membrane lining the eyelids. Um, transmission, so pink eye is most prevalent in summer months, and it is most commonly spread by face flies where the bacteria can actually survive on the fly for up to four days. And then also it can be spread by tall weeds and plants as cattle graze, so if the plants are excessively high, it can irritate the cow's eye. And then also feed and dust can be an eye irritant and then attract flies. And then carrier animals that show no signs of the illness can also transmit it. And then so symptoms, so there are actually four stages of pink eye and each stage has their own set of symptoms. <coughs> So the first stage is excessive tearing and cloudy cornea, and then a small ulcer forms. So the small ulcer is right here. And then stage two is the ulcer spreads across the eye, and then the cornea gets excessively cloudy, so the cornea, or the ulcer is right there. So is, is the ulcer this thing right here? Yes. Okay, and then it's spreading across yeah. the cloudy okay. And then stage three, so mm -hmm. inflammation. Inflammation continues, and the eye fills with fibrin, which is what gives it the yellow appearance. It kind of looks like a pus color. Wow. And then uh, the fourth stage is the ulcer actually extends through the cornea. And so this is the ulcer right there. You can see it through the eye. And this eye will ultimately be partially or completely blind. So um, a few years ago, actually, we started a herd of Herford cattle. And every single year, we've had problems with pink eye. And so these are actually my experiences. These are in our herd right now, and they do have pink eye. Um, so these are extremely recent. This photo. I love how recent that is. Look yeah. At that. The red calf is taken on September second, and then the black calf is taken on September fourth. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, the eye is bulging, but the corn. And then this one I've kind of highlighted because it's really bad picture, but. Um, so I'm assuming this is between stages of three and four because the, the ulcer has not yet extended through the cornea. And so some ways to treat this are um, an eye patch. And so an eye patch just kind of protects the eye. And then we've actually had this happen before. And so our vet actually sutured the calf's eye shut with dissolvable stitches. And suturing actually helps prevent corneal rupture. And then uh, treatments, so early treatment is extremely important and there's actually different treatments for different stages. Um, these are two things that we use. Um, so this is an eye spray and then this is an um, injection. It can be inter intramuscular or subcutaneous, um, but these are just what was recommended to us, so in any case, you should contact your local veterinarian. And sometimes, you know, I'm not sure of your housing situation, but like mm -hmm. when I lived in Nebraska, the cattle were a mile that way yeah. and maybe it wasn't any handling facility so things can get out of hand once mm -hmm. you find it. We used to, actually where I worked one time we had cowboys that could go out and last you know that's how distant it is out there. Mm -hmm. So attempted prevention, I have attempted an asterisk mm -hmm. because we've had this we've had this chart for about five years okay. and every single year we've had a problem with pink eye no matter what we do. So we've started vaccinating and then we use this intranasal spray. Um, this spray is only, or it's most effective in the first 24 hours of life. And so we try and monitor our cattle and see when they're about to calve. And if they are, we bring them up to the barn. And so then as close to the calf hitting the ground as possible, we tag them, fly tag them, and then try and put this nasal spray in their nose. Into the calf? Yes, into the calf, yeah. And then, so pasture man management. So our cows are in a pasture, and so we do a lot of mowing. So you want to mow to still an acceptable grazing level, but you don't want the plants to be really high, because as I said before, the high plants can um, irritate, the yeah, irritate the eye. And then manure cleanup around hot spot areas. So around like waters and feeders. And then barn management, um, as a manure cleanup, and then fresh bedding and straw, and then try and use fly spray because so like try and limit the amount of contact flies have with your cows because they are the most common um, spreader. So susceptibility, um, some breeds are actually more susceptible than others and the reason is they lack pigment in their eyelids 
And so these breeds are Hereford, Hereford Crosses, Charlet because they're white, and then some Holsteins. And the Holsteins they're referring to in this case are the ones with mostly white faces, and then they lack pigment in their um, eyelids. And then young calves because they have um, decreased immunity as in compared to adult animals. And then bull calves, actually. Oh. Okay. So this slide is to kind of just visualize what I mean by eyelid color. Um, so these are actually both my calves right now. Walker is the brown Swiss, and then Easton is the Hereford. He was born on Easter. And so you can see Walker has black eyelids. And so he would be a lot less susceptible than Easton. And you can see this is what I mean by lack pigment and color because he has pink eyelids. And then so this calf is actually why I became so interested in the susceptibility. So this is Rosie. Um, she is a Hereford Holstein cross. And so as you can see, she has white face, but she has red rings around her eyes, and she is half Hereford. So when in a lot with infected calves, did she still get the disease? And she's half Holstein. Yeah. Yeah. She was bred with a black Holstein, so I'm extremely surprised that she came out red. Well, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so um, here's another little tidbit of information. So crosses where the dam or the mother was a Hereford showed a slightly higher incidence of pink eye than when the sire or father was a Hereford. So Rosie's dam was a Holstein and her sire was a Hereford. So ultimately, Rosie did not get pink eye. And so potential reasons why she's pink eye free. So this is actually her mother. Um, she was one of my old show cows. And so as you can see, her face is extremely dark and you can't even see her eyes in that. And so um, Rosie or Daisy has been in with the Herefords for about four years, ever since I retired from showing her. And she has never gotten the disease. But she could be a carrier and could have built up immunity to the disease. And calves get immunity from their mothers. So she could have gotten immunity from her mother. Um, also vaccination. So we do vaccinate calves now. But I am hesitant to believe that it was vaccination because we vaccinated other calves at the same time she did. And they all still got pink eye. So, and it could have worked in her, but I'm hesitant to believe it did. And then also the red rings around her eyes. So I always thought it was kind of an old wives tale that if Herefords have red rings around their eyes and they're less susceptible to pink eye, but she has a very large red ring around this eye. And then this eye kind of looks like it has eyeliner on. So that leads me to believe that she has red pigmented eyelids, which would lead her less susceptible to pink eye. Okay. Now, the one thing that struck me was you were, you know, you're giving that vaccine intranasally yes. on the day of birth, mm -hmm. and usually you don't do that because if there's maternal antibodies, then the vaccine fail fails because of the presence of the maternal antibodies. Mm -hmm. So, is that? I mean, can you you just do that? Who recommended that? At I mean, um, is that how that actually? Is it yeah. recommended in the drug insert? I mean, yes. Does it say that too? Yeah. Okay, wow. Just find that interesting. Okay, if somebody else had questions, comments? Yes, yeah, so um, you said that when the ulcer extends through the cornea, the eye will be partially or completely blind. Mm -hmm. Is that just until the pink eye clears up, or is that permanent? That is permanent. Yeah. Yeah, it's, do you know when, because uh, I've seen them have pink eye and then completely resolve back, yeah. and you could never know. When do you reach the point where you can't go back, you know? I'm pretty sure it's the fourth stage because okay. any yeah. before that, you can kind of catch it and, and bring it back. Yeah. yeah. But once it extends yeah. through the cornea, then you've you got that physical back. damage. Yeah. I, yeah. See, what's neat is when people like do a, like the, the condition and then you treat it and then you take pictures as it's resolving, it's amazing sometimes what an eyeball can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, wow, it looked terrible. And then over time, with the right treatment, it got better. Now, one time I had some cattle in research that had pink eye, one, at least one. And the vet injected the antibiotic up above the eye. And I thought that was kind of neat. Because then it was dripping down over the eye over time. You see how that would work? It was like local treatment of the antibiotic. And I can't remember, you know, he. I should have watched better, but it was years ago and I was probably doing something else. But um, he would inject the antibiotic, I'm not sure which one, up above the eye. And I thought that was so neat because then every time the animal blinked, it was kind of like coating it with antibiotics. <coughs> Wouldn't that be kind of neat? Yeah. Okay. Super. We cannot plan these any better. I think we're all set.